Welcome in Braves Today, bravestoday.com. He's Lindsey Crosby. I'm Ben Taylor. It's all brought to you by plainscoffee.com. Go to promo code BRAVES. You can put that in. You get 10% off and get it shipped right to your door. Lindsey, we're finally here. This is Christmas for a lot of fans, if they are baseball fans in general. Uh, works out great for us, especially for pod reasons, that uh, the game got pushed back from a Thursday to a Friday. And speaking of which, um, opening day roster, since they were supposed to play on Thursday, I'm assuming it will stay the same on Friday and not going to move. But any surprises in the lineup for you? Not a one. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> I think the only real surprise you had, and we, I, I, I talked about this on the site and you know our writing and things like that, was you felt like you knew the opening day roster unless a veteran came loose. And in fact, Jesse Chavez came loose. Jackson Stevens is the one who lost a roster spot because of that. He elected free agency rather than Gwinnett. But the official opening day roster that came out Thursday morning, no surprises, right? Five infielders. Five outfielders, two catchers, and a DH. And then the pitchers, the five pitchers that we knew, your bullpen set. No surprises here. Uh, Some of my observations, though, I do like. Okay. Is I like how many lefties you have in the pen now. Because last year, for a good part of the year, A.J. Minter was it. And we, we talked in the postseason, that series against Philly, how you had Minter and not really anybody else, and so you couldn't use Mentor to open the game for you because you needed to save him for a key, pivotal moment. Well, this year, you've got Mentor back, you've got Aaron Bummer, you've got Dylan Lee, you've got Tyler Matzik, you've got four lefties in your bullpen. I can't remember a time Atlanta's had not only four lefties, but four good lefties. And so, like, you see how... Atlanta didn't just rest on their laurels. They went and tried to improve this roster by getting more uh, more velocity, more lefties in the pen, by adding another postseason starting option in Chris Sale, and raising the, the ceiling of left field by replacing Pilar and Rosario with Adam Duvall and Jared Kelnick. So yeah. no big surprises on this roster, but I honestly think it's one of the best rosters in all of baseball. Yeah, you and I have talked about that. I know that everybody loves to point to the Dodgers, number one, for being the best roster in baseball. Uh, they Some have even looked to the American League and talked about other, you know, Yankees always get thrown out there just because of how much money they spend on their particular roster. Uh, that doesn't, just because you throw money at it doesn't make it great. Um, you and I have discussed it, and it's it's funny that we're playing Philly, that the Braves are playing Philly, because I think Phil, I think Phillies have a, a, a great roster as far as uh, opening the season up. And um, and you could throw some others out there that uh, with some acquisitions that got made, but top to bottom, from pin to backups to, um, I mean, who even the two platooning at catcher, nobody has that sort of battery in all of baseball. So I think the Braves. Now you understand why they've taken it so serious in the off season that it's a win at all mentality because I think they see in their clubhouse, what they have, and they're like, we should be winning every game we play at this point. <laughs> like, it, it, the World Series or Bust mentality makes sense. And I I know I'm going to come off as biased if you're a fan of a different team, but every one of those teams you mentioned has significant question marks in their outfield, the back of the rotation, something like that. Like, look at Philly, Johan Rojas, uh, Brandon Marsh. Marsh had surgery in spring training on his knee. Rojas has, there's questions about whether he can hit at the major league level. Uh, mm-hmm. He did great in a small sample last year, I know, but there's still long-term questions about that. The Los Angeles Dodgers, for being as good as their top three or four or five are, their outfield doesn't really strike a lot of fear in anybody from an offensive perspective. Atlanta, I mean, you mentioned the catchers. There's no team that has two catchers as good as that. These are, tw- like, Darno was an all-star in 22. Murphy was an all-star in 23. Like, no other team has two catchers that were both all-stars in the last two years. Um, your outfield, your Michael Harris batted almost 300 for two straight years now. Yeah. Uh, despite coming up mid-season in 22, despite being hurt in, for part of 23. I mean, this is... Top to bottom, 
one of the best rosters in all of baseball, and it makes sense that they are World Series or bust. And if you think about it, this is Atlanta's best chance you've had in a while. And depending on how free agency goes, you may not have as good of a chance next year because you have to remember there's four players you could conceivably, five, I think, you could conceivably lose after this season. Max Fried's a free agent. Charlie Morton is old and a free agent. Yeah. Jay Minter's a free agent. Travis Darno and Marcelo Zuna have club options, but they could both potentially be done after this season as well. So, like, this is your, this is not, not your best chance. We don't know what's going to happen in free agency. Lord knows Alex Anthopoulos can run miracles, but yep. it looks like you have as many pieces as you've had in a long time to make a deep run in the postseason. And we'll have an idea of how Atlanta is going to do because you're facing the team who last time you saw them, they knocked you out of the postseason for the second yep. straight year in Philly. It's all brought to you by Plains Coffee. Go to plainscoffee.com. Get more information on what you can do there as well as order your coffee where they're going to go ahead and wait till you make that order and then they're going to roast those beans and then they're going to package them up and then they're going to send them to your front doorstep. And you can even get flavored coffee. Not that I recommend that because I'm a regular coffee type guy (laughs) or if you're not even a coffee person whatsoever, you also have the teas that you can get as well. Again, it's plainscoffee.com. Promo code BRAVES. Get your 10% off this is roster related before I get into because we were going to talk pitching matchups and I'm going to put you on the spot here okay. is uh, they haven't released the lineup yet. But do you think lineup wise we'll see anything that's just out of the ordinary? I know we won't from top to, I don't know, the number five slot. But after that, I'm not real sure what he plans on doing. The The most probable opening day lineups that we saw towards the end of spring training, I think, you know, through seven what it's going to be, right? Okay. Michael Harris has pretty consistently been number six. Your catcher spot, Sean Murphy or Darno, has been seven. I think my questions will be, we saw a lineup that had Kelnick at eight and Arcia at nine. We saw a lineup that had Arcia at eight and Kelnick at nine. You put Arcia uh, at eight, that means you've got back-to-back righties. And that's not really a thing you've had all year. But yep. they've also talked about getting Kelnick to bat in that nine spot so that I think I think actually think we discussed this the other day. He gets better pitches to hit because right yep. behind him is Ronald Acuna Jr. Uh, and and so I'm curious there. And then Atlanta's been pretty good about when you swap, like when they swapped the left fielders or when they swapped the catchers last year. They didn't change the lineup, right? It's just that was the catcher spot, and that's where Murphy or Duvall batted. When you see Adam Duvall enter the lineup for Game Three when you're facing Ranger Suarez, do you? also bat him ninth or do you move him up to eight or su- or seven or something like that right L- little curious about that but what does it say about braves fans when that's the biggest questions we have about the lineup whereas a team that's a contender like the yankees made a trade yesterday for john birdie from the marlins and might start him today in the at wow. third base like what does it say about not to say we're spoiled, but what's it say about the stability that the Braves can offer a fan base when these are our biggest questions is who bats eighth and who bats ninth, where other teams are asking who plays third base tomorrow. So Right. Yeah, it's and and I saw that and I also didn't know I know we've seen Harris consistently at that sixth spot. Mm-hmm. If that doesn't go well in this first series, do they look at throwing him back to the nine where he's comfortable and then moving people around? But I still think I'm with you. I think he stays at that sixth slot at least this opening weekend. Yeah, and I Brian Sinker hasn't really been uh, not. I'm not going to say I'm, what I'm trying to think of the right word. He's not really been super quick to make a change to the lineup if something's not working. Like look how long it took last year to get Olsen from number two to clean up. And so I think you'd have to see Michael Harris struggle for a good a good month or so. Okay. Before they even looked at moving him down, simply because that's not Brian Sitker's whole bag. Like he doesn't like right. to make changes just to make changes with the lineup. If if nobody got hurt, I legitimately wouldn't be surprised if this is a perfect world, obviously. But if everybody was healthy for every single game, I wouldn't be surprised to see the same nine guys in the same nine spots for 162 games. I think this is probably the only team mm. where you could imagine that would happen if everybody was healthy for every single game this year. 
Whereas every other team has different lineups every day or every week, depending on the series, depending on the matchup and all of that. I don't really see Atlanta making a lot of changes other than who is the catcher and do you change left fielders because of a lefty on the mound? You mentioned matchups. You mentioned the mound. Well, that's what we're going to talk about right now. Pitching matchups Good over segue. the weekend. Uh, yeah. You're a pro <laughs> at this, man. Golly. <laughs> Is uh, Strider gets that extra day of rest that we talked about him losing because of yeah. the rain down in Florida. Now he gets it back. Um, he will go on Friday against Wheeler. Then it's Freed Nola. Then it's Sale Suarez. Um, it, it, you and I have discussed this in length. Philly fans are about to jump in our mentions. Strider has been absolutely – the word dominant is, is is not even a worthy name for what he's been in the regular season against the Phillies. So he's probably licking his chops to begin this series. I don't think – I don't think folks realize how good Spencer Strider has been against the Phillies in the regular season. He has eight career appearances. Seven of those were starts. His first one was relief appearance. In those eight appearances, he's 8-0. It's not that the team has won all eight of those games. He's gotten a decision and gotten the win in all eight. 47 and a third innings, 10 runs. It's a 190 ERA. He's walked 10 batters. He struck out 72 he, his whip is 739 against Philly. It's for, for any opponent he's faced more than three times in the regular season. He has the best ERA and best whip against Philly. Like he literally, he's been better against Philadelphia in the regular season than any other team. And again, I hear Philly fans in the comments already saying, what's he done in the postseason? He's 0-3 in the postseason. Uh, and a lot of the ERA, it's a 540 ERA. A lot of that's because he got blown up in 22 coming off that oblique injury. He gave it five runs in like two and a third innings. Last yep. year in October, 12 and two thirds innings, four earned runs, struck out 15, but took the loss in both games because Atlanta lost both games in low scoring affairs. So 0 mm -hmm. 3 in the postseason. But again, four runs in 12 and two thirds innings, which isn't amazing, but it's not five, you know, it's not awful. Uh, yep. But. Regular season, he's literally never lost to Philadelphia. He's always gotten the win. And it's kind of hard to see that changing in uh in 2024. No, nobody on the Phillies, with the exception of Brandon Marsh, who's batting like 364, has a better batting average than like 222 against Strider. Mm -hmm. In the regular That's unbelievable. season. Unbelievable. Again, yeah, in the regular season. season. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and have fun, Philly fans. I know you're going to talk about it, but Lindsay even brought it up. We know the postseason is not the same. That's also 162 games away as far as we're talking. Uh, got to get there first. Yeah, got to get there first. So, uh, it, it, and then we back that up where this literally, this feels like a playoff series to begin yeah. the season. I mean, it's division rivals. It, it feels like the playoffs, even though we haven't even played game one yet. And the reason being is because you back it up with Freed and Nola, the, the the very next day and these are the guys they were opening day starters for their teams last year and now yep. they're both in game two but think of it more like co-aces than it is as far as a, a demotion to game two freed is like four and four with a 362 era against philly in his regular season career 19 appearances his last five starts he's got like a 289 era noel is in a similar situation uh noel was like 15 and 10 with a 340 ERA against Atlanta in his career. I think it's uh it's like 33 starts more against Atlanta than yeah. any other team. But his last five games, it's like a 319 ERA. So they've done really well recently. But the thing that I noticed when I was kind of going through and doing the preview of the pitching matchups is uh Freed's got kind of got mixed results against Philly's top hitters. JT Real Muto is batting 342. Trey Turner's batting like 367. But Kyle Schwarber's batting 150. Alec Bohm was batting 211. Even Bryce Harper, uh, 276 average, mm -hmm. but he hasn't hit a, a regular season home run against Freed since 2019. And then Aaron oh. Nola, uh, he's doing really well against some Braves. Michael Harris has a career 176 against him. <laughs> Orlando Arcee is batting 056. Yeah. But but then Austin Riley's batting 412 with five homers. Ronald Acuna Jr. is batting 326 with four. So it feels like Neither of these guys have completely shut down the opposing team, but they've been pretty good, and they're both really familiar with this opponent. And 
the rosters aren't that different from the last time they played. So really excited to kind of see what happens. Freed, Nola, but another really great matchup between these two teams. And then, of course, the finale of the series taking place on Sunday, and that will be Sale and Suarez going head-to-head. You and I talking beforehand, that's like Bryce Elder facing Bryce Elder this <laughs> on Sunday. It's it's like the only lefty-lefty matchup of the whole thing, and there's a lot of unknowns here, right? Like Chris yeah. Sale made one start against Philly last year, and that's the last time he's faced them since 2017. Uh, he gave wow. He gave up three runs on seven hits in six innings in May, struck out 10 batters against Philly. But then like Ranger Suarez, I don't know what it is about Ranger Suarez. The stuff isn't necessarily impressive, right? Like you look at stuff plus Bryce Elder grades out better than Ranger Suarez. But in yep. his career, including the postseason, Ranger Suarez has a 270 ERA against Atlanta. And Atlanta crushes lefty starters to the point where teams stack their rotation to mm-hmm. not have them face, uh, to not have their lefty starters face Atlanta. And Ranger Suarez is the exception to it. I don't understand why it works. And I'm really curious to see if Atlanta's finally figured it out. I'm really curious to see how Philly approaches Chris Sale. Because again, I mean, they had a little bit of success against him last year. Three runs yeah. and six innings. But they also struck out 10 times. Only one dude walked. And honestly, I'm, I'm just, I'm really intrigued to see what happens on Sunday. Ranger Suarez is basically the pitching version of what Dan Ugla was to the Braves when he was with the Marlins, <laughs> where he somehow crushes them, just kills them. Yeah, it, I don't know what it is, and 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 I don't like that, but I mean, it's something that we will see, and I'll be curious to see how Sale does. I mean, he had kind of a. His, his spring was fairly interesting, and I also am curious to see how long he's going to go. What's the, what's the hook on him That's on the Sunday other question. as well? Yeah, like we've, we've talked about managing sales innings. Uh, do you see him go five and dive, or do you see – does he get to go a little bit deeper into that game and you start limiting the innings per outing later in the year? It's a big question there. Swore, speaking of spring, Suarez looked to be about mile and a half to two mile an hour down on everything in spring. Oh. I wonder if that was just the intensity is not the same in spring or if that was something to be mindful of. Like if I if I remember right from watching this, I want to say Wheeler was in the same boat, right? Like Wheeler was also down a little bit in spring. And so like he was sitting 94, 95 instead of his usual 96, 97. I'm mm-hmm. assuming it's just uh, not getting 100% up in spring for both guys. But something to watch for. I feel like Strider had better velocity in spring than he usually does. Sale yep. had better velocity in spring than he usually does. Freed was a little bit in that same boat as Wheeler and Suarez. So we'll see what happens. But if Atlanta does finally figure out Ranger Suarez, I think it's going to be because either, one, they just finally figure out whatever it is weird that he's doing, or his velocity is not the same, and therefore the stuff doesn't play as well as it usually does. It's funny that you mentioned Freed being um, a little bit off as opposed to previous years. I, I wonder how much of that goes into what you just said about Suarez. Did he dial stuff back for spring? And the reason I say that is that's totally based off his post-game interview that I referred to. I referenced you earlier uh, in, in one of the earlier pods earlier in the week where it sounds like he had so much stuff he was working on in the spring. Mm-hmm. I think dominating ball games was not on his to-do list. I think it was yeah. more along the lines of – get right for the regular season. So I am curious, too, on that Saturday matchup, what Freed shows up at the ballpark uh, yeah. that day. That's the, is it anywhere near what we saw in spring? Yeah, that's the unknown part of these first matchups of the year is how stretched out are guys? Uh, what's the velocity going to do? How ready are they for the regular season? Because in some cases, like like Freed, like you said, like, uh, like Wheeler, like Suarez, They didn't look like their normal selves in spring, but was that intentional? Was that controllable or not? That's, that's kind of the big question here. And I, I guess we're going to do picks. I've, I've got Atlanta going one and one in the first two games. I don't know which one's a win, which one's a loss, but Atlanta going one and one in the first two games, it's all going to come down to game three. I think sales going to surprise a lot of people in his first game. So I've got Atlanta winning the series two one, um, winning, one of the first two, and then winning game three. 
It's a sweep in Philly for me. I'm going to go ahead and give them all three of the games. I'm going to be that sunshine pumper that always does, and that just uh, says that we'll probably go 0-3 and, and get swept since I said that. But uh, I will I will wear that crown. Sorry, Drake Baldwin, didn't get to you today, man. Uh, we will eventually and at least talk about some of your minor league numbers. Go to plainscoffee.com, promo code BRAVES, 10% off of anything that you purchase there. He's Lindsey Crosby. A couple of great articles up right now. One about Ronald Acuna Jr., as well as some winners and losers from the spring that Lindsey put up. I suggest you go read those. You'll enjoy those immensely, especially while you're killing time since the Braves got pushed back a day and you won't be able to watch baseball until after lunch on Friday. I mean, you can watch other teams, but it's not going to be as fun as watching Strider uh, I am, take though. on the Phillies. I am, though. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to be watching agree. like 10 games the next day or yeah. two. I've already got it up in the office already. It, just watching the the lead up to what's coming up, and 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 there's not even anything being played right now. So uh, <laughs> he's Lindsey Crosby. I'm Ben Taylor. Go to BravesToday.com. Find out more information as well. Lindsey, as always, I greatly appreciate it, sir. Thanks, buddy.